Hey out there, Slot Car Land. How's everybody doing this weekend? Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you caught the Slot Car News video that was up before this one. A lot of great new stuff in there. Hopefully we'll be doing more of those about every three, four months. Let some news build up and uh, we can be able to get some announcements and whatnot and all that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing I now just realized that I just did, and I just did that video by the way. Um, just realized that I forgot to include the news from the Portland race. Uh, Rick Phyllis, who is the man that runs the fray, was at that race, and he did say that the fray for 2023 is a go. So we're going to be at the fray this coming March. Very cool. Something we've missed the last two years. We, I can't believe it's been two years since we've been down there. Um, so going to be a lots of fun. We're going to go down a day early. Um, hope hope to be able to get some interviews with you guys with uh, R.C. Lincoln from Wizard and uh, Jeff Hurley and, from Hurricane Motorsports and Brad Bowman from Bowman uh, Bradstracks.com and a whole bunch of other people down there. So hopefully we can get all that for you guys while we're there and just have a great time and all that kind of stuff. So forgot to throw that into that news video. Um, today, right now, we're going to talk about controllers and what ohms do for you when it comes to a controller we're also going to talk about the digital controllers and what i prefer and what um what most uh things go on i've had some comments this comes from some people who have commented on uh on the comments page it's they wanted to know uh explain a bit about ohms what do they do for performance in the car and the motors and uh and the controller and what ohms do you use for what types of cars so that's what we're going to talk about today uh, first off, ohms have nothing to do with the performance of the car per se. Um, the, the, determin the big determining factor on how fast a car is on the track is A, how much volts you're running on your track, and how well the car is tuned. That's basically where your speed comes from. Ohms is more about control. It's not about what it does for the car performance-wise. It's more about you and the control you have over the car on the track. Um, most of the time, in general theory, your slower cars, your T-Jets, your Magna Traction cars, um, and and uh, your non-Mag cars, basically, this could also go for your, for your Auto World stuff, uh, your Thunder Jet 500s, and your X-Traction cars as well. You want a higher ohm controller. Usually a 45 to 60 ohm, depending on what your style is. There's no specific right ohm controller for each car. That all depends on your driving style, how you got the car set up, and all that kind of stuff. Um, most Some people prefer 60 ohm controllers. Some people prefer 45 ohm controllers when it comes to your T-Jets and your Magna Traction and your non-Mag cars. This can also go up into your um, G-Plus cars and... All that kind of stuff. Now, when you get into the more modern cars, your your Mega Gs, your Mega G Pluses, your Super Gs, and all that kind of stuff, you want a lower ohm controller, especially if you're going with your super, super fast cars, you really want a really low ohm controller. I prefer, uh, with my magnet cars, I use my, do you guys see me use this one a lot for that? This is a 30... This is, actually, this is a 25. This is a 25 ohm controller that I use for my magnet cars. The only one I did not use this on this year was the uh, 440X2s without the traction magnets. For some reason, I didn't have a lot of control with this controller for some reason with those cars. I actually used my 60 ohm controller for that. Like I said, it doesn't, it really doesn't, the ohms really don't do performance for your car. It's all about control of the car. So uh, that's basically what ohms do for you. Um, it, it's not about the performance of the car per se. It's about how you feel and how you control your car. Um, whether you have a car that's got a lot of coast, uh, whether you got a car that stops a lot. Um, if you got a car that stops a lot, a 45 ohm controller is probably the best car for that. If you got a car that's got a lot of roll, a 60 ohm controller is probably a lot more for that. Um, when it comes to the digital controllers, digital controllers don't have ohms. That's why most of them either have either are like this with a single dial, like this with a double dial, or sometimes there's a triple dial. 
Um, this one that I got for One Stop Slot Shop, this controller digitally is set up for T-Jets through G-Plus cars. So this is for anything of your older generation style cars. Um, I use it, I use this controller for everything from my T-Jets all the way up through, like I said, my G-Plus cars. Anything above my G-Plus, and I'm talking original G-Plus cars, I use my third, my 25-ohm controller. So that's what this style does back here. This is basically your ohms right here. This controls the sensitivity. Where When do you want that power to come in? Do you want it to come in right as you pull the trigger? Do you want it to come in more the further you pull the trigger back? That's what the digital controllers, that's what these dials do when it's a single dial. If it's a double dial like Elijah's DeFalco controller, this controller right here is your sensitivity. Your front dial is your sensitivity, which is what is the back dial on my controller is. And then this back dial here is your brake. You can actually dial in how much brake you want or how little brake you want. If there's a third dial on your controller, on your digital controllers, that's usually donated to coast. You can actually dial in how much coast you want. When You can actually dial in when your finger's off the throttle. You can dial in to where the car is actually still getting power. So that's what the, usually the third dial is on a three dial digital controller is a coast dial. So there'll be a sensitivity, a coast, and a brake dial. Um, these DeFalco controllers are really cool. You can buy these. They are kind of spendy. Um, I think this one was $145. <laughs> Or 145. You can order them specifically for what you want to use them for. Uh, Elijah, I ordered this one for Elijah for his birthday, basically set up for T Jet. So this thing is set up for anything from a T Jet through a G Plus car. But the cool thing about the Falcos is this little board right here. This board actually pops out, and you can buy a he. You can buy another board that would be for higher cars above an original G Plus car. So you can only you can only have so theoretically you can only have one controller with different boards for all of the cars that you have that you race. So very very cool. Um, you'll also see um, in certain circumstances you'll see uh, usually these are three dial controllers. They're all digital that also have a little box um, down the way on them as well. Those are for your really really fast hopped up like polymer magnet cars and your unlimited uh your unlimited unlimited magnet cars um the box is basically a heat sink you also see um they don't have a heat sink up here because it's not like this one here where that's what this is on this this is a heat sink on top of the resistor so it just takes the heat straight from the resistor into the into this to help cool the controller and in the electronic controllers it's the wires that actually get hot and that's what that little box is down the road, is to keep the wires from getting hot and, and burning up on your controller or whatnot. So that's what that is. If you see a, a digital controller with a box on it, that's what that box is. It's a, basically a heat sink for the cable wires on the controller is basically what that is. Um, if you guys um, want to get a good, good controller, get a DS... Uh, what is it? It's from One Stop Slot Shop. It's the lowest range controller they have on there. The guys in Portland st strictly use these controllers. They're all digital, and they have a little dial um, on them for sensitivity. you got to be kind of careful with that dial. Sometimes they get knocked off, so you got to be really careful with it. But they work great. I had a little trouble adapting to them at first, uh, the first time we went down there. But since we've been back, since we've gone down there like five times now, um, I'm starting to get used to them, and I'm starting to really like them, and they're very reasonable. Um, I think Brian bought one, uh, uh, and uh, Nick also has one now, and they love them as well. So they work really well, really cool. Um, they're a very cheap alternative. I think they're only like $45. They might even be cheaper than that. It might be like $35, $35, $45, something like that. They're not overly expensive, uh, but they are very, very good digital controllers, reasonably priced. 
Um, and they'll work with anything you have from uh, your T-Jets all the way up through your fast cars, whether, you, and if you just, especially if you just use um, your faster cars, our Mega G's or Mega G Pluses, that's what the Portland guys, that's the highest thing they run down there. They do run a super stock class, but it's still pretty much a stock class. I think the biggest car they run in that class is the Bulldog. So, you know, it's not like super polymer fast cars. So, but uh, that's my suggestion for you guys. If you're looking for a controller, you want something that can do any everything that you have in your collection that you race or that you play with or whatever, get a DS, can go to One Stop Slot Shop, get the DS controller. It, they all work. They work great, and they work with anything you have. So that's my recommendation there. So that's kind of a little bit of what um, ohms do for you. I'm not sure how much longer they're going to stick around. I know that Paul, I know get, trying to find old um, Parma controllers is getting really hard. Um, not a whole lot of places uh, sell them anymore. Everything's pretty much going to the digital controllers. So um, that's probably my recommendation. If you're looking for a controller, just get you a DS controller to start. They're fairly reasonable, really nice to use, very reliable. We've had very few issues. There has been a couple of issues with them, with the Portland guys. Uh, one is a trigger. Uh, they get kind of loose from side to side a little bit. Um, if you kind of lean on them a little bit, it will pull the wiper away from the digital board slightly, which is really easy to fix. You just go in and bend the tab a little bit, and it puts it right back on the con right back on the board. So there, but that's only happened with like one or two controllers down there. Like I said before, too, the little dial on them has a tendency to get knocked off if you're not careful with them. But outside of that, they're great controllers. Um, I will have to warn you, the trigger is slightly longer than your standard Parma or your standard uh, regular controllers. You can see these controllers are all three of these have the same trigger. And if you look at these triggers, they're about the same length as an old standard metal trigger. But the DS trigger is slightly longer, so if you if you have a tendency to keep your finger um, up close to your index finger, it will occasionally, if you're not careful, catch this finger and hold it open. So you got to kind of be you got to be kind of be uh, re uh, thoughtful of that when you're using the DS controllers that the trigger is slightly longer. So you got to kind of move your hand down the handle slightly. Um, the handle is slightly longer than your Parma controller, so you can move your hand down a little bit and be able to pull the trigger and not interfere with your finger down here. The Was it the second time we were down there? I think it was. The second time we were down there that we used the controller, I had that issue where I was up here on it, and I let off, and it, the trigger caught my finger and went into the corner wide open because the, the trigger didn't release. So I, when I go down there now, I'm very, you know, very thankful, and I think about it, and I keep my hand a lot lower on the handle of those controllers. So um, that's another, that's another thing about the DS controller. But you can work around it. You can get used to once you get used to using them, like I have. Now that we've been down there five times, I'm really getting used to those controllers. Really starting to love them. So that's my recommendation for you guys about that. So that's kind of what ohms do for you, even though they're kind of being faded out by the digital controllers. My uh, recommendation for you guys, if you're getting into the hobby and you want a good, reliable, economic controller, go with a DS controller. It'll work with anything you have and still have still have fun and what's with the hobby. So very cool there. So uh, next week, we'll be back with the bi-weekly feature car. I think I picked up five more cars while we were at Portland. So um, I've got, on top of what I haven't shown you from the haul that I got from my old manager, I've got five more cars to add on top of that. So we got plenty of cars. Um, to uh, to uh, <clears throat> show you guys in the bi-weekly feature car. Um, after that, I'm not sure what we're going to do. I definitely want to get back to the 3x5 build. I've been saying that, but I definitely do. Um, and uh, after, uh, on top of that, um, there's some other things. We're possibly going to add another three feet to the, to the road course layout. Um, we'll, we'll, if we do that, we'll show that. And um, there's some other things I want to do. Um, there's some building we need to do. There's some tuning we need to do for next season. We're going to be showing some of that on the channel as well. And uh, just keep having fun. Don't forget to check out the merch store, like I said in the news video. And showed you guys there's some great new shirts there. Go check them out. 
Um, there's also more there than just shirts. We have shirts, hats, sweatshirts, tank tops, uh, mugs, travel mugs, a uh, couple backpacks on a couple of them, a couple other things too. So go check it out. Go investigate that whole thing. Don't forget to go to slotcarcrazy.com. I've added a bunch of new YouTube channels there, um, a bunch of new links as well for uh, pieces like RPM Motorsports and uh, his channel. Um, did I? I think I, I put Norcar slot car scene on there. I'll have to check that out and see if I did that or not. And uh, there's a couple other YouTube channels that I also put up on there. So the YouTube channel is getting a little fuller. It looks more like the home page on the YouTube page here where I listed everybody's uh, slot car uh, YouTube channels. So go check them out. Go support these guys. They do great work. Um, they have some great things. If you're into 30-second scale cars as well as HO cars, go check out No Cow Slot Car Scene. Jim Rose races the 30-second scale cars as well. If you're into really fast, high-end polymer cars, go check out RPM Motorsports, Roger Purcelli's channel. They did a live build on there of a Wiz... I think it was a Viper chassis. Uh, about a month ago, I think. They did a live build. Go check that out. Show us how to put a car together and what he does to make them really fast. He is a three-time national Harpa champ, so he knows what he's doing with those cars. So go check him out as well and everybody else there. And don't forget to check out all of the people that we support here that we buy from and that we get our parts from and all that so we can keep this hobby going and everything. So remember, keep that pin in the slot, the wheels on the downside. Keep racing slot cars. I will catch you guys in the next video. Keep having fun. Keep racing slot cars. And I'm out. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.